By the end of today's video, you're going to have a full idea of what it takes to be an AI prompt engineer. The information I'm going to show you today is based off 10 months of me building out my own artificial intelligence integrated software. To showcase how to prompt engineer, I'm going to be using OpenAI's dashboard today, but this can be applied to any AI provider. Gemini, Anthropic, Copilot, everything. I have no clue how long this video will be, but what I can guarantee is by the end, you'll have a pretty good idea of how to be an AI prompt engineer. Let's jump into today's video. Welcome back y'all. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create effective prompts in the context of developing software. If you wanna see how to create effective prompts when talking to different chatbots in that kind of user interface, check out this video right here as I go over the best way to craft prompts. The title is Prompt, prompt Crafting 101. So you can check that out. In this video though, this is gonna be very specific in the context of AI prompt engineering for the development of software. What you may or may not know is an expanding field has a ton of opportunity and you're able to create a ton of value. All right, enough talking, let's jump in. Let's go and discuss the documentation real quick so we can understand where to input our data, why it's relevant, and how to handle the different types of variables associated with our prompts. As a quick overview, when dealing with artificial intelligence in your software, you're gonna be making completion calls. Essentially, think of it like when you're talking to ChatGPT and you give an input and it gives an output, we do this, but in the context of software, and more specifically in the context of a scalable way that allows us to automate different value points for our underlying consumer. Now, when looking at a completion prompt, there is two major things I need you to understand. The first major thing you need to understand when crafting prompts is the role of system and the role of user. How do we leverage this? I want you to look at system as that is where you're gonna input your instructions. We're gonna create some instructions together so you can understand how to correctly create instructions that are effective, but look at it as that's the prompt. That's telling the underlying AI provider what to do. I want you to look at user as that is the data we're providing. Give me a use case, Corbin. What are we talking about here? So in today's video, we're gonna do an email responder. Essentially, we're gonna set up instructions that are specific in the system prompt. Once we set up those instructions, the only thing we're putting for the input or the user is going to be the relevant email data. No other proctoring, no other dictation, purely the data. So look at this as instructions, data, that's it. This will make more sense as we keep going here. Second major thing for you to understand is we have a bunch of different variables we can actually call within a API endpoint. Now this includes stuff like max tokens, presence penalty, response format, seed, stop, stream, stream options, temperature, tapi. The list goes on, but what I want you to care about is only two. These other variables have their relevance and use cases, but to be honest with y'all, depending on your use case, most of you are gonna only opt for temperature and max tokens. The use case of max tokens, well, first off, let me take a step back. Tokens are how you're charged with the AI provider. More tokens, more cost. I believe they said around 1,000 tokens equates to around 750 words of output and like input, of course, as well. Therefore, your max tokens is going to set a ceiling so that you don't get crazy long prompts or outputs that could detrimentally cost you a ton of money for your operations. It's always a good idea to set up your max tokens. What's a good number, Corbin? Anywhere between 500 to 1,000 depending on your use case. Next major option you're gonna choose between is temperature and top P. I want you to think of these as your ability to kind of gauge its creativity. A lower temperature means it's less creative and more consistent on outputs. A higher temperature, it could go off the rails and give you some crazy outputs. Knowing this, know your use case. Therefore, if you have a use case where you need consistency, if a thousand users were to access this endpoint, would all a thousand users get the same value point at the end in the context of like, this is how you write an email. If you want consistency at scale, you're gonna do a low temperature. Alternatively, if you're dealing with maybe something more creative, like an article generator, you'd probably go with a higher temperature. But what I always opt to do is lower temperature is better because we want user 334 to have the same experience as user 2,156. How was your experience? Good. <laughs> We've given you an overview of what you need to know when even approaching an endpoint like this. The same type of logic could be applied to other AI providers. Let's actually do an example together here. We're gonna go ahead and use Playground and chat within our OpenAI dashboard to showcase this. In reality, when developing your software, this would be within whatever you're coding in. Me personally, I use Visual Code Studio. Corbin, what are other things I should be using for my backend and my front end? Check out this video right here. It's like a, I don't even know how long, but it's like six blocks. I show you from start to finish everything encompassed with building out an AI software, all the tools, everything that would be necessary. So check that out. Let's create a prompt. Here we go. So let's go ahead and adjust our settings here in code. Obviously we want to have a nice little UI like this, but we're going to go ahead and set our top P. Actually, we're not going to use top P. We're going to use temperature. We're going to set this all the way down to 0.1. 
We need consistency. We need a scalable product. Point one. Max tokens, we'll set it to 500 or just 501. Everything else we can ignore for now. Perfect. Let's go ahead and create our instructions together. Your instructions are going to have six major parts. Let's do the first part together. The first part here is going to identify context. This is going to allow the system to understand its major use case anytime it receives data in the user input. I'm going to go ahead and shrink myself down a little bit, y'all. Here we go. Typically, when writing instructions for the system, you don't want to overkill it. You don't want to write an essay, MLA format, five paragraphs, turn in at 8 p.m. on. Se no, I'm just joking. But don't write essays. We want to be as concise and very specific for dictation. The less words to get across our point, the better. So for now, we're just going to simply say, you are an email responder. I will provide you with an email I received. Please respond. Now, for example, like one thing I just messed up on right now, or not really a mess up on, is we don't need things like please. So you don't have to put please in there. Less words, better. Delete. You are an email responder. I will provide you with an email I received and you respond. There we go. Section number two is going to be steps. Steps outline the exact process you want your underlying AI provider to take when approaching the data you provide. When I say data, I'm referring to whatever is the thing you're gonna format, reformat, or use as context for your output. A email, a article, a video. Steps are gonna be formatted like so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, the list goes on, but however many steps, for our context, we'll go up to three. Now you don't want to make your steps too lengthy. If you're getting up to 10, think of ways to approach your data better. E.g., are we going to do a looping mechanism? E.g., are we going to run this through a prompt before this data is received to this prompt? You know, be effective here. Step one, understand what is wanted in the email received. For this, actually, we're only going to do two steps. So we'll do step two, write a response to this email. Knowing this, let's go to add a little bit more context here. My name is, and in code, obviously, if you were actually going to make this into software, you know, we would use these little, uh, well, actually, depending on the code you use, you'd use little brackets for this. These would be input variables we'd put into the prompt. But for our context, we're just going to fix it. We'll use fixed text. So assuming that this is just fixed text, we can provide, you know, my name is Corbin. I work at OTARC or OTEC Solutions. If you're writing software, these would be variable points that you allow the consumer to put into their settings. I work at OTEC Solutions and... I am customer support. Here we go. Steps, understand what is wanted in the email received, reference the subject line and body, write a response to the email. Let's go to step three or section three. Section three may have relevance to you or may not have relevance to you. It's gonna be depending on the context of the type of data you're inputting. Let's just say with the data we're inputting, we have identified the subject and the body using semicolons. We're gonna go in and say full email where the subject is identified with subject is identified with body, body semicolon. Now that it knows the input format it's receiving, let's go and identify the output format. We're simply gonna say when providing an output, don't use, I'm gonna do quotation marks here, subject semicolon or body, body semicolon, just output the relevant text for each section. Section five here, we're just gonna simply give an example output that we like. So I'm gonna do example output here. I'm actually just gonna generate one from ChatGPT real quick to make my life easy. Here we go, so we have an example output of how we'd want it to look. Notice how with specific variables that will show up in the input, we're gonna to wanna to identify that. First major one being the high name. It's going to now know that if there's a name that shows up in the input data, it will reference that instead of just saying high name. Use this as you will, structure this as you will. This is gonna be more general as you're gonna to wanna to basically just give a general idea of how you wanna structure it. One important thing that I'm doing here, for example, is adding this as fixed text as every email, quote unquote email to respond to would have my name in OTEC Solutions. And the last section we're gonna add here is gonna be specific instructions, specific things you want to identify and ensure happen during your outputs. So for our example, we're just gonna say each email body should be max of four sentences. Identify stuff that's relevant to you. Identify stuff that you know you want to make sure shows up at scale. And there we go. We have our six sections created and we have a functional API endpoint that we can start referencing with input data. For reference, the six sections were full context, steps, input format, output format, example output, specific instructions. As described before, the user message will be the input data. When looking at API documentation, the system is the instructions we just created together. And this is where we're gonna put in the input data. We're gonna have an example email that we just received. As I identified with the import format, 
we're assuming that with the data we receive, for some reason, subjects and body semicolons are there still. This is just to help you identify if there's like little metrics within your data that you want to identify and make sure it doesn't show up in the output. That's kind of why I did it in this context. But when you see input format, we've identified that the subject semicolon and the body semicolon is going to exist with our user message. So here's our user message. We have the subject semicolon and the body semicolon. Inquiry about product features. Hi, Corbin. I recently came across your website and I'm interested in the new features of your software products. Could you provide me more details on the key functionalities and available documentation? Thank you, Alex. That's all should go in the user message. It should just be the relevant data we care about. Let's hit run. And there we go, y'all. We have successfully created a scalable endpoint for the context of email input and email output. Hi, Alex. Reference up the example output up here. Hi, name. Gave the paragraph here. And obviously, in the context, we could add a link to documentation or more information that would be relevant for these kind of outputs. And then gave us Best Corbin OTech Solutions customer support. Perfect, y'all. If you feel like you learned something in today's video, make sure you leave a like. It's completely free. At the end here, I'm going to leave a playlist called From Concept to Software that goes over other topics like this. I give niche examples with the software I'm currently developing and a bunch of other stuff. So check it out. Without further ado, though, I'll see you in the next video. This is the playlist I was referencing when it comes to concept and software. That's a random video based off your clicks. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.